I too am delighted to be here. Such a distinguished group of South Carolinians. I, I happen to think that people of South Carolina are just a little bit different, a little bit stronger, a little more special than all those in, in the whole world, and that's why we're enjoying so much prosperity now, and it's going to continue. And that's why it is so special that we are doing what we're doing today. It's important to remember things. When I was a child growing up on North Trenum Road, we used to go through the woods and go up to what was the German prison camp. You can still see a little bit of it up there on East Shore and Brookfield Road out by Forest Lake School. But we'd go up there and it had been abandoned. It was a concrete block structure and two big warehouses. And there was a fence around it, of course, because as you remember, after 1943, a lot of the German prisoners were bought, brought to this country. And there were, I think there were 21 prison camps around South Carolina. But anyway, we'd squeeze through the fence and go in and walk through the cells, walk through the warehouses. And I can remember it like it was yesterday, because I was there prison camp, German prison camp. And later on, I'd tell people about that as I was a young adult, and a lot of people just couldn't believe that there was a German prison camp right here in South Carolina. Just a small part, a small part of what happened in those years. Last night on television, I was watching a Smithsonian show about Egypt, and there was a very excited Egyptologist, I think you call him, they had discovered another tomb of an Egyptian princess. And this one was at Giza, where many of the earlier pyramids were. And you remember later the pharaohs were buried in the Valley of the Kings, about 400 miles up the Nile River in Luxor. Well, this was a big find because it was apparently in close to Giza. And there these scientists were uncovering this tomb and they went inside with great expectations. It turned out they concluded that the tomb had not been robbed, not after it had been sealed up like the pyramids, but before it had been sealed up, because it was still sealed up, but there was very little inside, the remains of the princess and a few other things. But watching that and thinking of all the other shows and things that we've seen about Egypt and the pyramids 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, it seems remote because we weren't there. Uh, there's certainly no one living in this room who was there. But still, we try to remember and try to learn from it. Now, that brings us to the day. Here we are 75 years, almost to the day, from the liberation of Auschwitz. What a significant event in the history, not only of our country, but of, of our world. And in a few years, there will be very few who were actually there who can tell us what they remember of that event, of those days, of those times. So it is incumbent on us as leaders, as leaders in the world today, to be sure that we never forget, to be sure that this story is told over and over and made not remote but real to all of us and to the young people who will follow us when we are gone. That is why this day, that is why this commemoration, this celebration of the liberation of Auschwitz, of the people in Auschwitz, those remaining in Auschwitz, must be a living memory. We must never forget because it must never happen again. So I'd like to present a proclamation Here it is. The State of South Carolina, Governor's Proclamation, whereas the Holocaust was the state-sponsored systematic prosecution and murder of six million Jews by Nazi Germany and its collaborators, and whereas while the racist Nazi ideology focused on the total elimination of Jews, Millions more, including Poles, the disabled, Jehovah's Witnesses, and many others were targeted for the tyrannical oppression, persecution, and execution 
that characterized the Nazi command. And whereas it is through studying the history and the personal accounts of survivors of the Holocaust that we learn of our responsibilities as individuals, societies, and governments to overcome hatred, persecution, bigotry, and tyranny. And whereas January 27, 2020, marks the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birgenau, the largest German Nazi concentration camp and extermination center, and the site where over 1.1 million innocent men, women, and children lost their lives to forces of evil beyond our comprehension. And whereas the United Nations General Assembly has designated January 27 as International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and has held commemoration ceremonies to mark this anniversary. Now, therefore, I, Henry McMaster, governor of the great state of South Carolina, do hereby proclaim January 27, 2020, as International Holocaust Remembrance Day throughout the state and encourage all South Carolinians to remember the victims of the Holocaust, honor the survivors and rescuers, and further the education of present and future generations to prevent future atrocities and acts of genocide. Signed by me, your proud, happy governor of approximately five million wonderful South Carolinians, Henry McMaster, governor of South Carolina. <laughs>